Hi everyone, my name is Cheryl and this is my Happy Handcraft Studio. Happy days in Alberta. We have beautiful fall weather that's been going on for a couple of weeks. We uh, live quite near Kananaskis country and a week or so ago we went for a beautiful fall drive and saw amazing scenery. Uh, we have beautiful mountains. These are the Rocky Mountains of Alberta and um, Sheep River Falls is a beautiful natural area, very well used by the people uh, in this part of the province. So we had a beautiful drive, we had a great hike, and we spotted some wildlife. Uh, the picture I'm going to show is a bighorn sheep that was along the side of the road um, and was very happy to pose there for, for quite a while. Uh, it has really got a lot colder over the last few days and big winds have come through, so we've lost a lot of those leaves so it's fall it's time to get all cozy in my studio time to think more about quilting and knitting which I'm happy about that's a good way to spend my time so in Canada we are going to be celebrating our Thanksgiving this weekend we have a turkey all ready to go pumpkin pie in the fridge so it's going to be a very thankful time. So I did finish my Thank Wool project. So this is called Give Thanks, Thank Wool. And it was a free pattern by Stitchworks. Now the fabric is a vintage fabric. It's an even weave, uh, 28 count in mushroom. I looked at Helen D, how she does her herringbone stitch. Uh, she has a really nice tutorial on finishing um, pillows. And so I looked for her advice and finished this one. Made a little felt flower with a button. And then on the back, I have another little felt piece with some buttons attached. So I'm excited to put this up um, in the kitchen where we're celebrating. So that is ready to go and what I realized is that's my one and only Thanksgiving piece so I'll need to look at doing some more of those. So I did finish a, a few other things. I finished Holiday Cherub 2000. This is a free pattern on the Mirabilia site and I thought I'd try a free pattern to see if a Mirabilia was something I'd be interested in, and I really quite enjoyed this little piece. I had a beautiful piece of fabric in my stash that I backed this piece, and then just whip stitched some gold cord on. I have a little gold um, easel that it's going to sit on. And then the last finish that I had was um, the Seasons of the Heart Spring. And this was in the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitching Magazine for Spring 2021. It is by uh, Janine McGowan. And... Um, she has a series of these. She's going to have one for each of the seasons. So I was looking for frames for it. And when I went to value, no, Goodwill, I found this frame. 
And the reason I knew this frame would work is when I have a piece that I'm looking for a frame, I photocopy my actual piece so that I know what the actual dimensions are and if it'll fit in the frame. And this one not only fit in the frame, but I think the, the matte color that came with the frame was also really good for this little piece. So I'm happy to have that ready for spring. So those were my fully finished objects, my FFOs. So I did have a new start. So when I talked to you last week, I, or last time I had a, a video, I talked about um, this little kit that I had found at our Ujama Grandma garage sale and that I might start it on my mom's birthday. And I did. I had a really pretty good start on it. Once I got started, I didn't want to put it down. So I'm looking forward to continuing on this one. It's not a top priority, but I am really looking forward to, to doing some more on it. And then having that near my stitching spot. And then after that, I was continuing to work on my regulars. Uh, so I have October started in um, Jardin Privé's Meteo 2021. This is my temperature chart for this year. And I can't believe that it's the 10th month already. Just two more months to go. And then I have some finishing over on the side, adding some buttons. And I already have an idea of how I'm going to finish it. So I'm really looking forward to getting this done in the next while. Um, yeah, so this was a free pattern by Jardin Privé. So I also completed my October section for Linens and Threads Mystery Stitch Along. Uh, it's, the pattern is available free on their website, Linens and Threads. And um, I always follow the Facebook group just to see the, com the combinations that other stitchers use. So this was my October um, tile. And so we just have November and then there's going to be something in this area. But that's what makes it a mystery. So, loving this. It's going to be wonderful to have that finished at the end of the year. Uh, another piece that I really wanted to keep up on, and I'm going to be doing fine, I think, on this. This is the 100 Owls by Owl Forest Embroidery. I'm doing this on a 32 count Pearl Grey Lugana. And I have, you know, gone from top to bottom. So now I just have this section here to work on. So in October, I want to do the, there's a tree that looks just like this. I'm going to get that done. And then I'll be able to finish the rest November, December. So I'm loving, loving how this is coming along. When I first started, I wasn't sure about the color of the linen with the threads, but now that I'm seeing it come together, I'm really, really loving it. And every time I do it, I have a new favorite owl, or, or next time I look at it, something else pops out. So I'm really enjoying working on this one. And... 
A piece that I'm just getting back to now is Flanders Fields Biscornu. This is uh, from Beth Twist at Heartstring Samplery. It's on um, a Zweigart Ada Mystic Gray 18 count. And I would real I'm really going to focus on this one because I'd like to have it done by Remembrance Day, which is November the 11th. Um, it'd be great. That's that's my goal right now is to to have that ready to go. And as I look at it here, I see oh, I didn't finish this top part. It's a good thing that you look at this with a second set of eyes. So. I have that to finish and then this one to finish. But that's that's fine. Looking forward to that. And then the last bit of stitching that I've been working on is my personal sampler. And so uh, since you saw it last, all I've done was add Lula Bell into the center. So Lulabelle was my mother's pet name for me when I was little, and that's the name I'm going to use on my sampler. And really it is just, I'm designing it really as I go. Um, I did mention the last time we talked that I'm not happy with the placement of this, so I am going to frog it and move it in this way. I'm just leaving it here for now just to judge colors, just so I can see what the colors will be on my my um, sampler. Yeah, so it's just it's just gonna grow band by band. As I get inspiration, I'll continue continue to work on it. So that's what I've been working on. I'm happy with all of those those things. Uh, so plans for stitching. Definitely Flanders Fields. That will be the one that I focus on now uh, till it's finished. And I do want to hopefully start and finish this Day of the Dead. Haven't dyed the fabric yet, but um, maybe today. There's always tomorrow. So definitely that. And um, I did take a book out of the library on cross stitch, Miss, uh, the Mr. X Stitch Guide to Cross Stitch. And I located the book because I love this Mona Lisa, and I think that's something that I would like to stitch. And then I love this squirrel. I think that squirrel is just amazing. So that would be a good piece to have in the Thanksgiving season. So I hope to maybe kit those two up so that I can start them sometime. So I've really been thinking about plans for the new year already. And when I think about plans, I'm thinking about where things will be in my home, what kinds of pieces I feel I'm missing, how many pieces do I actually want. So um, I love cross stitching, but I don't necessarily want to have a lot of, a lot more pieces in my home. I'm happy, um, you know, with my artwork and sort of minimal decoration but i love i love the act of stitching and so i am going to continue to do some smalls for the seasons because i do have places in my home that can use sort of a rotating um, selection of small pieces of cross stitch and i do have areas where i could put some pieces that take a lot of time. So 
uh, something like, you know, the 100 owls that could maybe rotate in and out seasonally, the Talavera. So when I'm looking now for pieces for 2022, I'm looking for a piece that can last me the year. So I, I have chosen one that's going to be my 2022 start. It's been ordered, so I'm just waiting for that to arrive with its fabric. And when that comes, I'll, I'll share it with you. And I'd also like um, another major Christmas piece. Um, I like working on Christmas all year round. So I'm going to see if I can find a piece that um, will take time. I, like, that's where I'm at right now. I, I don't want things to be done quickly that I then need to find a place to display them. Um, I, want, I want to stitch, but I want it to last a long time. All right, so that is my stitching. And so now I'm going to show you the few things that I've done for sewing. Um, I have a chair out on my porch that I put a seasonal pillow and flowers. And so I thought, well, I should have, you know, a Thanksgiving or Halloween pillow out there. And then I thought, well, do I want, you know, like, how many pillows do I want? Now I just, I have the base and then I just make new covers for it for the season. And I had um, the orange fabric. Now should it be fall or should it be Halloween? So I made it both and I love how these turned out. So this is my fall pillow. And what I did is uh, I made a, a quilted leaf and it has just some decorative stitching on it attached to this center band. And then what I've done is I've put snaps on the back of the band. So when Thanksgiving is over, or we're getting closer to Halloween, I made a Halloween band as well that again snaps on. And the snaps are just plastic snaps from Amazon. They sell a really good uh, kit that has the snaps and the tool. And then I made this little pumpkin person to sit on the pillow. So I think, I think they're great. And again, sort of a multi-use. I might, um, I think I'll try to do the same thing this winter where I'll use maybe a red pillow and then uh, do something that's Christmas and then something that's winter to get kind of double use out of, out of the pillow. Yeah, so I love that. And it is getting to be quilt season. I've had guild meetings for both quilt guilds I'm in. And um, I've chosen fabric for the mystery quilt for uh, one of my quilt guilds. And again, with getting too many things. So when I make quilts, by the time I'm done with them, I love them so much that I don't give them away or you know donate them to charity but I'm just getting too many. So when I planned this quilt, I planned it with the idea that it, it will be a charity quilt. And so I've designed it so that someone else will like it. So it's, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be for a person who, you know, loves bright colors, um, maybe loves art, loves to draw. So I've I had in my stash these really bright colors here that read as solids. 
and I have a dark color that is there's um, I think you need like three and a half yards of one of the colors and then I bought this fabric to go with it that will make it I think more of a you know a quilt for a particular style of, of room or artistic person just so that um, I don't think I need it when it's done. <laughs> I, get, I, I should be happy that uh, I really like the things that I make, but it, it's time to make for somebody else. And so this quilt is going to be my mystery quilt. And it's a mystery. I have no idea how it's going to work. So let's, we'll, we'll see. Follow along. All right, and then last thing is um, books that I've read recently, and I have I have one book, one book that I really enjoyed over the last couple of weeks, and that book is called The Lost Apothecary. It's a book by Sarah Penner. It's a new book came out in 2021 and um, it, it, it was interesting it, it, I liked I liked how it um, how the story developed uh, from the book it says a female apothecary secretly dispenses poisons to liberate women from men who have wronged them rule number one, Poison must not be used to harm a woman. Number two, the names of murderer and victim must be recorded in the registry. And what's interesting about this book is that it goes from um, the late 1700s, where we have Nella, who is the healer slash poisoner, and uh, a woman... Um, Caroline, who comes to London um, to think about some new life choices, let's just say, and um, find something that relates back to Nella, the apothecary. And um, great it's it's a mystery uh, we learn about different herbal remedies and poisons it was it was great this is uh, for one of my book clubs that I'm in and I think it will have some good discussion so if you decide to read it I'd love to hear what you think of it so that was the lost apothecary all right. Well, if you are Canadian, I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving this weekend. Enjoy. Enjoy the, um, the food. Hopefully where you're at, you can enjoy some companionship. We have really limited um, restrictions on who we can share our Thanksgiving celebrations with here in Alberta. But we always have to just be thankful for the good health and the family that we have. All right. And so I wish you well and happy stitching. Bye-bye.